Hello, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Real. I'm your host, is Naini, and here with Kelly. Good morning, Kelly. How are you? Good morning. I'm great. How are you? Very good too. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about home staging and prepping your home for sale uh, this spring, which is going to be pretty pretty hot market. That we're already kind of getting a glimpse of it. Um, and uh, so we're going to kind of expand on that topic a little bit and explain to you guys the importance of it and what exactly are the things you should be focusing on uh, in order to prep your home to sell. Um, but just as a recap, Kelly, can you tell us pretty quickly what we talked about last episode? Yep. So last week we talked about Mortgage 101 and it was pretty much, I had eight different things that we reviewed from start to finish what a mortgage is, what goes into it, you know, interest rates, term, all that good stuff, um, the different product types that there are, um, and the difference between a pre-approval and approval, because again, there are a lot of pieces that go into a mortgage. Um, but I definitely recommend watching that if you are interested in knowing the background on mortgages and what's involved, because it was definitely a good in-depth description of mortgages from yes. start to finish. Yeah, it was a pretty good one. And if you guys have any additional questions on that, just reach out to Kelly directly. Yep. The contact information is here. She's the expert, so she'll be able to really explain to you in detail or further detail um, in regards of mortgage and how you get started, what, you know, how to get your pre-approval in order to buy a home. Um, so as usual, we're going to do our myth of the day. And uh, this one is kind of related to the uh, the top of the day. Um, so a lot of people think that minor repairs uh, can wait until later. Uh, that there are other more important things to do when they are selling their home. Um, and this is like a, a tricky one because it can be yes or no for this, depending on what these minor repairs are for people. You know, some people have a different concept uh, idea of what minor repairs are. Um, and some other people have different ideas about that too. So, um, I feel like this, the best way to approach this and Kelly, you can chime in on this one too, is it's really having a professional guiding you from beginning to end on the beginning stages of like your sale, because, um, some people go overboard on things that they want to do in the house in order to sell. And then some people don't do anything at all. And then both ways can jeopardize the sale. You don't want to overspan, right? When you're trying to sell, but you also don't want to take care of the things that actually matter or that can potentially uh, help you sell your house quicker or even for a better price. Um, so you, what do you think, Kelly? I agree on both sides, selling and buying. You have to think about the buyer, of course. Um, and. I'm just going to kind of use myself as an example. Yeah. Um, my realtor, he was fabulous. Um, I really enjoyed working with him. I mean, he was on the buying side, but they talked to the seller's agent in the house that we bought. Um, there was, I think, our, a radon thing we had to, we had an inspection done. So my big thing with people is getting the inspection done like up front because then you know but on the sell on your sides like as the selling agent those are the types of things that as an agent you should be up to par and most are yeah. know that most hey, you know, <laughs> <laughs> what's that i said most <laughs> most are um yeah. you know i i don't work with every agent in the world i only work with so many but most are pretty you know, pretty good about it, but it's yeah. just making sure that that home, if the buyer decides to have an inspection, your realtor should know what needs, what should be good in that house. But yes, yeah. the minor thing, like our house, the minor thing we had to do was the radon. We put a new radon detector in, they paid for it because it was only a couple bucks to do that um, on our house. Now we had an inspection done, but I bought my house in 05. Yeah. And back then, Different <laughs> had to have, I mean, there was no waving inspections. <laughs> no. no, that wasn't a thing. <laughs> so yes, I, I agree. It's definitely those little things like that, that should be, taking care of up front. You know, the bigger yeah. things, obviously those are discussions that the realtor, the seller's realtor would have a conversation about, but they would have to look at it to see 
if if and what makes sense to have done. Um, but there's something that that should be put in the contract, obviously. If, yes. if the house is being sold as is, you know, here's the history of the house. That's something that the buyer should know. But yeah, and and really depends on the strategy that that buyers, I mean, the seller and the agents are we're gonna have for that property. And that's why I always say go to a professional because if you have non issues, you're, you're aware you're the seller, so you leave in the property, you know that there are issues that you are aware of. Um, some of them may be like bigger to the seller because they're leaving a bit than he actually is. And then some of the issues, they, the seller may think like, oh, this is not a problem at all. And it may be a major issue actually to be able to obtain a buyer. Um, for example, just a very quick example, if the, the house is being sold and we are trying to reach pretty much all masses, all types of buyers with all types of financing, uh, one common thing that we as agents um, try to watch out for in, in the early just stages before we even put it for sale is, for example, missing FCI outlets in the kitchen, uh, missing carbon exact detectors on each floor. Uh, so those are like very minor repairs, like, you know, like you're saying here, that must be done in order for us to not have to run into that issue and have to do it anyway halfway through the process. So those little things are not expensive, but they are actually important. Um, so this myth here, in that case, applies perfectly. Uh, but there are other things, like some sellers may want to change the entire carpet in the entire floor, and that's a couple thousand dollars. It may not be needed because, again, maybe that buyer might end up going and getting a different color or not liking the carpet at all and doing other flooring. So that kind of expense, I mean, unless we're really, it's really rough and you're trying to get a, pr a higher price, again, strategy depends on a lot of the strategy, but they may not be needed, right? We can just right. try to sell as is. And we are in a strong seller's market. So that kind of repair uh, might, might be able to just stay the way it is and might not be needed because a buyer is going to buy and renovate it and paint it and change the flooring as they want. But the important stuff may seem small to the seller may actually be very important to the deal. So again, knowing um, what those things are, talking to a professional to get ready ahead of time uh, is very important. So I think that really comes down, this myth really comes down to talk to someone first before you start spending your dollars on things that you think it may be important and it might end up not really being needed, being needed. Right. So it really which, comes down to that. Which with that being said, it brings me into my questions for you on getting the house ready. Okay. Um, so a couple things like with the start, um, it kind of goes along with the myth. Mm -hmm. So, you know, staging your home, a couple questions for you. Um, like with the carpet, maybe okay. in that case, maybe they should just do a clean, like clean the carpet good. Yes. So what are your recommendations with um, cleaning? Uh, is a deep clean necessary? And, um, you know, what are, what goes into that with like maybe some decluttering and depersonalization to kind of make the house look um, not not necessarily not lived in, but yeah. obviously every home is to whomever's living in that home. What are some cleaning recommendations? You know, is a deep clean, is that a good recommendation? Right. Yep. And talk about like decluttering and the depersonalization to kind of make the house look like the house behind you in your, that you're at right now. Like, yeah, right? <laughs> like, so, so, so using this as like an example, right? If you look at this, what are you seeing? You're seeing cozy environment, nothing too flashy, no bright colors. It's somewhat inviting. Uh, it looks clean, it looks organized, but not cluttered. Um, okay. We see one picture frame here, but it, it's not personable, right? There's no like 300,000 people on the wall. It's just a, an art picture. So these are actually good pointers. Um, this one might be maybe too buoyant, but it's, it's a good example. Uh, not everybody's house is going to look like this, of course. And it brings me to like what home staging. Some, sometimes we talk about home staging or home prepping your home uh, to sell, and people automatically think, oh, they're going to bring in, you know, professional furniture and stage my home. It doesn't have to be that way. 
when we're talking about home staging, home, home prepping, we're really talking about preparing your home to create an inviting atmosphere. That's really what we're trying to go for and really appeal to the masses. Um, and that's when, what, that's why I did, when I'm talking to potential sellers, I always say it's very important for me to do a walkthrough through your house. I'm not trying to be nosy. I'm not trying to, you know, whatever. Um, but they say like, oh, what? Just give me the health value, and you know, through, through the information you have. But seeing the home really does um, make a huge difference on pricing because how the, the condition is, you know, how the quality of the, the, the stuff in, inside the property that we can see just from data on online makes a big difference. So going back to the home staging reports. You want to create this atmosphere. You mentioned about decluttering and depersonalization, right? Those, that's the very first thing I always tell my clients uh, to do. So you want to have as many open paths in every single room as possible. So maybe if you are in the process of already moving, you might want to maybe store some things away if you have very uh, a lot of furniture. Uh, and keep like just a couple pieces that are essential to you to remain in the property um, because that's a, maybe another common myth. Two people think that in order to sell, they have to leave the house. And that, necessarily, that doesn't, doesn't happen necessarily every time. Some people have to remain in the property before they can sell. So they still living in that property and that's okay. Um, but we are trying to make it look like the rooms, when it, you want to make the rooms look bigger. So you want to minimize the furniture um, quantity and also open up as much space to walk around as possible so people can see the actual room without your furniture in it. Um, and then the, person, the depersonalization portion, sometimes like we sometimes don't. A lot of people will, you know, create an atmosphere at home that feels like them. So they might have a lot of very flashy um, pictures, a lot of um, uh, family stuff uh, everywhere, little hanging things, and that can become very cluttered or it may be difficult for a potential buyer to see themselves in that property because it's so unique to that seller. Uh, so we try to ask them, take the pictures down, you know, you're getting ready to sell, just start putting stuff away, it helps you also get ready to move, you know, so you start packing some things, things away, keep one picture on the wall maybe, like you don't want to take everything now, but one picture instead of like 30, right? Some people do go overboard on that creation. So that's kind of like the depersonalization and surfaces. That's another thing that uh, helps a lot. A lot of people keep a lot of things, especially the kitchen, a lot of things on the kitchen counter. And then it's hard to even see the counter because, you know, you're leaving it, you're using it on a daily basis. So you want to have your toaster, you want to have your deep air fryer, you want to have your coffee maker, and it's everything, and there's no counter space. <laughs> right. So for a buyer coming in, uh, they might be like, oh, shoot, this is too small of a kitchen. I don't even have counter space. But if you clear it, then the perspective, that first visit might be a little bit different. So... Decluttering comes also with clearing all the surfaces throughout the property, um, making sure everything is kind of like very, think about minimalistic design. That's what you're going for for your home. You're just taking everything out and making the bare minimum, uh, really just so the person can see the room and maybe visualize based on your couch position what the options could be, right? Um, and then the other thing you mentioned was the cleaning. I yeah. feel like that's so important. Um, some people are already super clean neat and their house is always perfect. But those are not the masses. <laughs> that's not the majority. Uh, so assume that you should be cleaning your home further than you already do, right? So if you haven't cleaned your carpet in a while, maybe you have carpet cleaning right before we put it, we take professional photos might be a good idea. So that carpet is like fresh and looking great and you see the lines of the vacuum you know like that that, that says something to that buyer they mm -hmm. feel like okay this house is ready for me instead of going into a home where the carpet is all shaggy and dirty you know and the person's like oh, I my house was well. not mine was not deep cleaned it was not deep cleaned it was not yeah. for sure you still yeah. sell it. You say it's 2005. That shouldn't have made a difference, but I know we did a major deep clean in our house. So, but that's that's a good thing. Um, yeah. Do you, as yourself as a realtor, do you work with your butt with your um, 
with your sellers to make sure that's something that's done yes. prior to somebody moving in? I will, um, I will actually usually offer a cleaning to my seller before the photos. So that's like a personal thing I do. Uh, I, I, and that's part of my service, right? Maybe mm-hmm. different agents might have different things they do. But for me, I usually provide a professional cleaning prior photos. That way the, the photos look great. Um, I don't do personal staging. That would be an additional fee. But if a home is vacant, I will actually have a professional come in and stage the property. Uh, okay. But that's not included with just the regular listing. That would be a premium, you know, if someone wants to do that. And for some properties, that may be the best option, especially properties that have an awkward layout. Sometimes having a professional, um, you know, home stager come through and create a vision for those homes so people can actually envision like, okay, oh, so that's how I can use this, this bedroom that is funky layout, right? So home staging can be a miracle worker and I'll definitely recommend that to a client if I see it fit because it is an additional expense. The home tour okay. is definitely part of what I offer because, I mean, I feel like this is an essential part of selling. Um, now, of course, it will depend because some people are in the house and have kids. So sometimes I will, I still offer that, but I will offer that to the seller, to the buyer. I mean, so I'll put it as part of the listing and say, look, the house will be professionally clean before the buyer takes ownership. Because doing the, the cleaning might not be necessarily helpful because they're still living in the property and it's still, you know, right. going on there. So it depends. So with that being said, tell me how you highlight a home's best features. Like what goes into that? So, you know, different homes have different characteristics. So again, it's so important for a realtor to do the walkthrough through a property because if you realize there are specific um, architectural features in the home, a, 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 like um, personal personalized crown molding, something handcrafted, uh, a fireplace that is, you know, like a really feature of the home, I will make recommendations to that seller to maybe highlight those features that they know. Like maybe they they added a outdoor kitchen. We're going to try to create uh, an atmosphere to bring that buyer to that walk to do so they can really see it. And that's like a stand down moment of doing that walk through. So I'll make recommendations based on each house. Mm-hmm. Every house is going to have different features, right? So if the flooring is gorgeous, let's take off the carpet, you know, let's take off the rugs so you can highlight that flooring. Um, so just things like that. Um, if you have an amazing uh, cabinet in the kitchen, let's clear, make sure everything is cleared off. And um, and then also soft lighting, maybe spotlighting sometimes can be a good thing too, so we can highlight, um, especially for fireplaces, if you put a spotlighting, you can create like, ooh, that's just the fireplace, you know. So it depends on the house. There's okay. different things you can do. That totally makes sense. So tell me about like, because you did mention some some places have like bright colors here. And tell me about colors of houses and if people should kind of make it like neutral colors or is that or do they just leave it? Do they just leave the colors there? Um, tell me how how you would recommend with color schemes with people and in in putting a house on the market. Yeah, so painting, painting walls, it's it's a topic that really falls into the market and how the market is doing, right? So um, painting a house has always been a thing that people, first thing that people think is I'm going to paint my house. It's also very, yeah, right? We did it, we painted, <laughs> I think every room, but our living room and our bedroom, we, we did it. <laughs> yeah, and, and I mean, depend on, depending on the market and depending on the house and the neighborhood, I would definitely say, yes, let's paint the entire home before we sell. Um, and the price range too, right? Because different price ranges have different expectations on the buyer path. Um, but again, depends on the market. So we are right now in a very strong seller's market and the buyers are expecting to have to do things on the house that they're getting, right? So in today's market, maybe I wouldn't recommend every seller to do painting, but some properties may need it because, you know, some people are, love colors. Uh, they, they, they live like in a, um, a, what do you call it, the needle cube? <laughs> so you turn, I forget the name. The Rubik's Cube. The Rubik's Cube. Some people yes. live in a Rubik's Cube, right? Every room is a different color and it's very bright and it's very 
mm-hmm. and they love it because that's their personality. But that doesn't appeal to the masses, right? A, a lot of people want to come in and feel like they can do things to the house now that they're being like eaten alive by the house. And a lot right. of people coming into a house that has a purple wall and then an orange wall and then a green wall and then a blue wall, they're like, oh, so that's too much for me to do. I don't want to do this. So mm-hmm. if I come into a property and I see that that's the case, I will make recommendations. Maybe keep one room colorful, paint the rest, like the main floor be one tone. Uh, that way that first impression coming into the house is more, you know, subtle, it's more calm. It's, you know, the person feels like more invited, uh, neutral. It's really the key, um, but it really plays out, right? Budget, the, the seller has the budget because painting at home is expensive. Right. Um, and also sometimes it's not just about the color. Sometimes, the, especially with families with lots of kids, uh, the walls will be very dirty, be scruffed up. So. Um, maybe they had a lot of picture frames and now they have a bunch of, uh, you know, holes that they have to patch. So you, a painting might be recommended for that room in particular. Um, so it really depends. But again, budget, market, price range, what the expectations for that price range in that market is at that time. So it really varies, um, you know, for, from person to person, from house to house, from time to time. So with that being said, um, because you kind of talked about it a little bit with the different rooms and stuff, how, what are the best ways to make, to create an inviting, an inviting atmosphere for buyers coming into that? And I think you kind of said that with the different painting, um, but I know there's some other features that can be done and I'm sure we kind of summed it up. Yeah. That probably sums everything up. How do you, how you as the seller's realtor advise your um, your sellers to make their house inviting and um, make people want to, to buy that room, right? Yeah. yeah, so first impressions are very, very important. When you're selling a house during the winter time, if there's snow outside, it may not be as important. Uh, but now that we're coming into springtime and we're talking about prepping a house for springtime, it's very important that your first impression of the home, the curb appeal, be amazing. So spruce up some flowers. If you, even if you don't have a green thumb like I don't, <laughs> get some flowers just for spring and put them out yeah. there. Cause that's a good idea. Yeah, just one pot in each side of the door. It already kind of brings some some color to that property. Um, if your wheels are recommended, you can do a fresh coat of paint outside, but maybe sometimes just a power wash might do a magical wonders uh, by clearing up you know, that dirt that just naturally sets uh, on the property on the outside. So just the power cleaning uh, on the outside would be great. And then when you get into a property, there are things that hit you right at first, right? The the smell uh, will be the very first thing. Uh, Lighting is the second thing. And then um, coziness, right? Like uh, cleanliness or space. So when someone comes in, you don't want to have your entryway cluttered. So we want to be, the people want to come in and feel like they have room to come in, right? So make sure your entryways are always lit, that they are cleared, and then they smell good. But also, please don't overwhelm buyers with Febreze smell on the house because they also may think that that's hiding something, right? Like a lot of buyers are like, oh, it smells very strong. It smells great, but it's very strong, so they're hiding something. Don't overdo it. We want to be like scuttled. That's a really good tip. It is. It is. Trust me. This is like from walking with clients. That that's the things you hear, right? So that's when I'm giving advice to a seller. That's what I'm thinking. Like, what all my buyers have complained or mentioned or you know talked about. So the, the first impression is really huge um, because that sets the tone for the entire walkthrough of that buyer. Um, so lighting. You want to make sure if you are able to, especially if you're living in a property, keep the lights on. Uh, if my clients have a vacant property, maybe they already left, I'll make sure that I ask the agents to leave the lights on so I can just go there end of the day and turn it off myself. But leaving the lights on uh, creates more li- lively, you know, to the property. Like the property just looks better when there's tons of lights on and you can see things. Uh, otherwise, you're going to think the house is dungy, like dark, and you don't want people to think that, especially if some of your walls might be darker. Uh, again, it comes back to like neutral colors are better, light, lighter colors are better. But if you happen to have a darker room, you want to make sure you have good lighting on that room 
Um, and if you don't have ceiling lights, sometimes we can put lamps uh, and make sure those lamps are on during the show so people actually can have that good first impression for that room in particular. Um, going back to the smells, um, you can always have you know cookies going or something that gives that coziness the smell throughout the property. Um, not a, every time that's gonna be not gonna be possible because sometimes we have like I don't know, 10 showings in a day that cookie smell is not gonna last. But if the house is clean and it has a very subtle scent, not too strong throughout the whole property, uh, that's gonna keep that buyer already kind of like at ease and comfortable. And I think that's good too. Um, so lighting a smell and decluttering, being able to walk around freely and not uh, feeling like they're just doubling over things or seeing things that they don't want to see. Like we, you know, there's sometimes people will throw a sock and you'll be lost on the floor. Nobody wants to see yourself on the floor. So think up after yourself, you know, as a seller. I know you're still leaving on the property, but you have to know that you have people coming over and you want to put your best foot forward every time. And it is tough sometimes, especially when you have kids, uh, to keep a house sparkly clean. Um, but the best you can do, people, buyers will know, have expectations if you have kids that the kids better may not be perfect. So don't worry about that. But other things, right? The smell, the cleanliness, the lighting, those are things that really create this atmosphere and makes that buyer feel like they're coming home when you're looking at your home. So I think that's kind of like a summary of all the things you can do. There's yeah. other things yet, but I think that, that can help you create a good atmosphere. Yeah, I think you kind of did the conclusion in that whole like creating that atmosphere kind of sums everything up yeah <laughs> what we went over um you know and i think the biggest thing is working with your realtor on you know what should i do with my home how do i get it so that it's um ready to sell on the market and people people want to buy my house and really you kind of declutter, deep clean if you feel it's necessary. The, the sense that's a huge thing. Yeah, the smells is big on people. Yep, and because when as a buyer they want to come in and you know with the declutter and stuff they want to imagine the house as if they were living in it. Yeah. So where can they put their stuff? So if there's not a ton of stuff on the walls or on the counters, then they can you know Visualize. everybody has stuff. You know they can think about where they want to put their things. Yeah. in the home so yeah. another thing too if you have a basement please have a humidifier running at all times even if your basement is not humid because that will help with that musky feeling in the basement mm -hmm. and again maybe your basement is not like that but just to avoid any you know situations a lot of people are very sensitive to that mm -hmm. you may not be as the seller maybe you use right. it so having a humidifier running uh, we personally don't have that musky scent in our basement, but my husband made sure of that. But we there's thing that we still have moisture though in the basement. So there's things like we have these little buckets that we kind of they're hidden. Yeah. And we have them sit in the closets that that collect the the moisture in the air, and that I think also helps with um, the smell. Yeah. So we don't. We don't have a smell in our basement, but we we know that there is a little bit of moisture in the basement, and you know, obviously, you have to change them out. But they're yeah. nobody knows that they're there. Yeah, because they're in. It's like, that's they're, a good tip. Um, you know, be, better yet than running a dehumidifier. Yeah, if your basement is already somewhat dry. That could be a good solution. Just to put it hidden into the corners. Uh, throughout the showing time that way well you and it's funny time. because we i we keep our coats in our basement and we actually had like because we didn't do that you know my there's not a whole lot of moisture in our basement and but we had our our coats i had to our coats had like mold and stuff started to grow on them so oh, that's really? what made us realize and this was after he had done the redid the basement that made us realize that there oh there actually is moisture in our basement even though it didn't really seem like it we didn't have it we didn't we don't have moisture sitting on the ground in our basement because we have enough drainage outside but it it is there is moisture in the air down there yeah so and sometimes we, we just can't tell like really we, we can't we didn't and we didn't know it until 
that we saw, and it wasn't a ton, a couple yeah. of the, the coats in the basement had some stuff on it that we were able to clean off, like wash, but that was like, oh, <laughs> we need to make sure that that moisture is being collected. So there are simple yeah. things like that that can be done to help with moisture if you're not interested in putting a, a dehumidifier. So, yeah, very yeah. true. Oh, I just saw that there's a... Oh, hi, Lori. <laughs> I just saw there was a, so, someone commented. So it's Lori. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're saying hi, hi. <laughs> um, so yeah, so um, I think that's basically it to prepping your home for sale. If you guys would like to you know, learn more or maybe uh, understand what can be done for your property, in particular, maybe you're considering selling sometime soon, I'll be more than happy to answer your questions and maybe even do a walkthrough to the point pinpoint the things that you may be trying to focus on. Um, so despite what some sellers may think or potential sellers may think, um, you want to get in touch with a realtor months before you sell. Uh, a lot of my, my listings, they I'm in touch with a seller on average three to six months before they actually go on market. And that's that because- makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah, it, it, it's not something you do out of the sun. They're like, oh, today I'm selling my home. It's not. Yeah. Um, there's a preparation for it. We really want to make sure you as the seller is able to get the most money you can get for your property. Uh, and we are not trying to waste your dollars, your hard-earned dollars on things that you don't have to. Uh, but at the same time, if there are things we can do uh, that are more cost-effective to bring your value up, that's what I will make the recommendations to you. Uh, so it's very important to start early. If your plan is to have this um, property on the market by September, we should be talking now, right? Uh, and getting it started with that preparation. Also, to understand your finances to purchase the next home too. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that's where Kelly comes in. Sometimes we chime in together to kind of prepare um, a seller to purchase a new home because you want to know, okay, how much can I go for my next home? Uh, what are what is it now? You know, current rates is that not going to be the same as your current mortgage, right? So you want to understand what your buying power <coughs> is as of now, and then also, uh, do you need to sell first before you can buy, uh, or can you buy first and then sell later? Right? There's there's things that you need to understand. A lot of people may think, oh, I have to sell my home. Uh, I mean, need to finish paying my mortgage first before I can sell. That's not true. Mm -mm. Oh, you do, <laughs> but mm -hmm. that can be done on a buy and sell situation. So there's different things we can do to assist you. Uh, maybe you may uh, already own your home free and clear and you want to buy another home, uh, but you want to use the funds from your current home to buy the next one. Maybe a breach loan may be an option uh, to hold you over until then or yep. not. Maybe yep. we, we offer them. And if, if our bridge loan isn't a good product, because I know our rates can be a little bit higher. Yeah. We do have people in our network that we can refer you to to get one. So a bridge loan is definitely an option. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe you just get a regular mortgage and pay it off later, uh, which I think we have a client that is doing that right now, um, right. selling her home and then. I mean, we're buying her home through first and she's going to sell and then just get a regular mortgage and stuff. And when she sells the other one, she's pay off the, the current mortgage. So she's right. going to probably have a mortgage for a few months and that's okay. There's no prepayment, prepayment OT fee for this. Um, she just has the cost, but we looked at it. It was cheaper for her to get a regular mortgage and to hold a bridge loan. So she decided to go for that. So maybe that's your option that you can do too. So again, talking to professionals to prepare you to get to that point it's very important the sooner you start the better it is so we can better assist you as well if you come to us with a time crunch we're gonna make it work but ideally you want to have a little more time so nobody's stressed out um, and anything you want to add to that too i don't think so i think i don't think so i think we covered everything that that goes into prepping your home so yep i think that sums it up Awesome. And then for uh, the next two episodes, uh, some of you may know, but I am getting married. <laughs> yay. And, uh, yay. and then Kelly's going to be coming to my wedding. Yay. Yay. <laughs> so uh, we're going to have the next two episodes uh, pre-recorded for you guys. Uh, one of them I'm very excited about because we actually doing a special episode since we're doing the pre-recording. Uh, we are highlighting a local business for you guys. Uh, so you're going to get to learn a little bit more about this 
new business i hope you guys see you next time when it comes i believe we're gonna have this one going live uh to you guys next monday and then the following one we're gonna be talking about what was that um it now. is hold on i have it in my notes here <laughs> that just went away no the, pro, the pros and cons between buying and renting Yes, yeah, that's going to be a good one too. So yeah, so next one is going to be a business highlight, and then the following week you guys are going to have the pros and cons of buying versus renting, which there's so many. Um, so we're going to kind of give you guys some good insights between the two, uh, because again, it depends on your you know situation and where you're going through. So we're going to kind of point it out, good and bad from both of them, yep. and then whatever you are, you can decide if buying maybe is better or maybe continue to rent for a little longer. You know? Now. And that's that's it for today. Um, I hope you guys have an amazing day and watch out for our next two episodes. <laughs> have a good one, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye.